update. As you can see, we have broken back above 40K, which was the resistance point, and we did it very quickly. Um, so that shows a lot of strength in the marketplace, and this kind of goes back to my main theme that uh, the bigger money is supporting it. Even though the volume's not really there, um, I believe the bigger money is stepping in and just buying whatever the retail traders have sold. And uh, they're looking to go, like me, uh, end of year to see where we're going to go. Um, now, short term, the only thing that I would want to be able to sell, and I'll sell some if we get above this 49K, this upper 49K area. Remember, this was the area that I was looking for based off of the pattern. That's it. Uh, got nothing to do but there. That's the only area I would be looking to sell anything. Um, you know what I've done, I fully invested into here. I even had additional funds, almost 40%, uh, if we had broke below the lows, which we did not do. Instead, we kind of, you know, did this whole mess right here and then broke back above. Uh, this market is very strong. Uh, supply is diminishing. Um, so I, I, I think that upwards moves, especially to this area up here, uh, it's going to be very likely. Uh, and then maybe a pull all the way back down to here. And then continuation upwards is kind of like what I would be looking for. Uh, we're going to see. There are reflective activities and volume and trading that I've noticed. And uh, the biggest thing that I've noticed is uh, the larger orders. Um, they're, they're hedge funds. they are banks, whoever are taking big chunks out of the marketplace. They got big bids. Big bids are, <laughs> uh, it's one of the things I use in uh, Forex trading uh, to spot, you know, program, you know, certain elements of their algorithmic trading, they give themselves away. Uh, I studied the tape and uh, that's why I like that old book from 100 years ago um, because it, it taught me to pay attention to, uh, you know, what actually the cause and causation of price movement. And I, I focused and I observed and I said, okay, well, these are the elements that come together and give a move before it happens. And it's the same thing with, uh, you know, Bitcoin. You can see the same type of activity. So that's that bodes very well for the future. And I'll, I'll give you some of the ideas of what I think and why that is. Now, I'm also going to talk about allocation, how I allocate funds. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just education based off of what I do. And um, I've done very well. And uh, if you can mimic, you know, the returns that I've had, I think you would be very um, happy with them. And it's asymmetric in value. It doesn't always happen when you want it to. But if I look at the year over year returns that I've had, it's averaged out um, to over 150% a year for about five years. Now, it's kind of askew because the amounts of money that I used uh, was variable and uh, it increased over time because, you know, I put more money in as I'd done better. But uh, my original move that I had um, uh, that took uh, I had some ridiculous amount, um, uh, but it was smaller because I used smaller funds. Uh, but let's go into, let's, let's first, uh, not get off track here. Let's go over and talk about the causation factors. What's uh, the fundamentals, as it were, and the things that I see that could lead to uh, higher prices um, uh, going forward. And we're kind of following this triangle that we have here, right? It stayed, you know, the over here negative. It stayed outside of there. Now it's bounced into it. And this is an energy form for me. This triangle represents energy. Now it's back within the triangle. That shows very bullishness within a time gap. Now if this trades outside and back to the downside, that would be negative. But it would still fit within its time variable. Its time variable is from May all the way to from here. Where did it start? May 2nd, I think it was. And goes all the way out to July 21st. So that's when it ends. And this represents an energy triangle. And if it does certain things, you know, and this is kind of strange because I usually use rectangles for my time values, 
but you can also triangulate. It's uh, fixing the geometry to time and price and, and energy uh, of how this works. And uh, it doing this, where it follows the upward triangle here, uh, denotes bullishness and a scenario, one of the scenarios statistically, of uh, you know uh, it following the path of the bigger picture that goes all the way up into there. Uh, and if that happens, that would be really, um, that's going to tell me a few things and uh, tell me of numbers that I would expect going out into the future. So right now, if I look at this and I want the numbers that go out into the future, I'm targeting this 118.894 as a minimum. Now, is that the end all price of it going out for the next, uh, into winter time? Not really. Uh, there's also the numbers that go above there. One stretches out to 240 and another stretches all the way up to around 360. And so these are two identifiable areas of possible, you know, we can go to here, we can go to here or here going out through to the end of the year. Um, now, which one it goes to or, you know, where it stops, that's up to the minimum is this one right here, 118. So that's the safe bet statistically. Um, if we get for like for like movement, uh, but you never know you get exaggeration in, in uh, Crypto and if the supply really does run out and diminish you're gonna see FOMO like you've never seen FOMO before and There are a few more than a few people like the MicroStrategy guy and and others that are aware of this in my opinion and That's why they're trying to put as much money as they possibly can before this move develops and people are caught off guard and they're like, what the hell happened? Um, they get that what the F moment. Um, and uh, there's so much awareness. The big, Here's the biggest thing is the amount of awareness that people have for crypto now. It is intense. You see it on CNBC. You see it on uh, commercials all over uh, Bloomberg and other channels and, and uh even regular channels of, uh, for news. And so the amount of people that are, have their eyeballs on this, and that's where adoption takes place, uh, has been super intense the past year. Uh, as well, you have lots of companies getting into this space, and I'm going to show you some of the examples of this. But anyway, this is what I'm looking at. Nothing has changed. Um, we never got to go below here. I, I still have that 40% of money on the sidelines. Eh, I'll see what I'll do about with that. But uh, yeah, I have nothing to do. If we can get above here, this 49K, uh, I might sell some. Eh, I don't even want to do that, honestly. I want to go for the bigger numbers out through the rest of the year. Uh, that's where my real focus is on. I'm happy that I got the pullback to 30K. And I'm fully invested back into it. So, you know, I can just hodl from this point, really. I don't really need to trade. But if I was to trade any, it would be above the 40, the uh, 49K area, 49 to 50K. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. And if we do, for some reason, some crazy news comes out, go all the way back down under here, I'm just going to be buying more. And I've got my buy areas. You know what they are. I've told you about them ahead of time. And if you paid attention to my videos, 27.5, uh, 25.5, and uh, 23.5. Okay, those are the next three buy areas. And that's basically it. Uh, we are right now above the 40K. Um, broke through it without one, skipping one beat to the upside with a great deal of ease, like it wasn't even there. So that's very positive, and it's following this triangle right here of energy, and that's what it represents, triangle energy and time and price. Um, so it's, uh, that's positive. Over here, when it was slipping below it, that was showing supply and very negative with volume associated with it very quickly. Um, you know, but these are all the retail degenerate gamblers that got washed out in the marketplace. Um, a lot, lots of those leveraged traders, that's why you can see in the room, uh, you know, 
the ones who follow the the automatic signals and so forth which you know if you would have listened to my videos maybe it would have been a good idea to turn it off and not go buy sign because a lot of these signal providers and traders no offense um, all they know how to do is buy they only know how to do buy signals they don't really know how to short uh, they don't have any planning or anything like that. They use indicators and systems to go over and trade, and they're silly. Uh, it's not the way you make real long-term profits, but to each their own. That's their own uh, methodology of trading, and I, I'm not here to criticize it. You know, I just trade my way because I have to actually increase my wealth. And speaking of that, let's go on to part two of this video. And give me one second, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to show you how I allocate funds. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just going over and educating you as to what I do. Um, and when I'm allocating funds, I usually keep half of my trading funds for Bitcoin alone, whether it's hedging or trading, uh, you know, different levels and so forth, which I've done over the past years. Um, that's my main focus. And then the other half of the money that I use I do on altcoins, whether it's trades, uh, mainly majors like XRP or um, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, and the like. Uh, and I, I uh, so I separate the two, and you know uh, that's my main thing there. And um, then 20% of the funds I used for hodling. So year over year, at the end of the profits, you know I go over and I look at my balance sheet and I say oh, how much have I made. All right, I'm going to put 20% in, um, you know, uh, uh, for holding, and then I'll pick the coins. 50% of it will be Bitcoin, and the other 50% will be in Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP, and, and such. And that's kind of the way that I've done it. Now, I've done very well the past four years, over 150% year-over-year returns. Um, now, of course, it's, it skews one year I had 300% return early on, and um, uh, the 2015 to 17, before the, the big run that we had, you know, Ethereum was 11 to $14 a coin where I bought it, and then it ran all the way up to three to $400. Um, I don't have to tell you that the returns were extremely, you know, but I only invested so much in there. And so a few thousand dollars turned into over 70 uh, very quickly. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it, it grew very fast from when it started, um, you know, and then from there, I actually started trading, trading, like I would with currency, um, like the euro and so forth. And then um, that's where it really got more interesting for me because then it was, you know, I was focused on the actual trading. And uh, so that's an idea for you of how I allocate funds. 50% in Bitcoin, 50% in the altcoins that I like to trade, and 20% um, year over year I just put into a HODL position, which is basically buy and hold. And, um, you know, so I take the profits from uh, at the end of the year and I separate them accordingly. Um, so if that makes sense to you, that's what I do. And let me go on to the next thing. Um, you know, some of the fundamentals that have occurred recently that I want you to focus on too about Bitcoin. And let's take a look at this. So what we have here are banks. More and more banks I've noticed are getting involved in Bitcoin. And they're announcing programs. So what they'll start doing is acquiring slowly, and uh, probably in large amounts, like these large buy orders that I see. This one's creating a, their own crypto division. You got another asset manager um, with large amounts of funds uh, planning to enter the crypto market, and then you have uh, Michael Saylor of uh, MicroStrategy. He was raising funds, 500 million for. Uh, it, it just buying more Bitcoin. Now that's kind of crazy, but that's what he believes in. And you have other things like uh, Interactive Brokers, my broker um, that I use, is getting involved in crypto. That's going to open up a huge amount of money, um, as well as uh, banking regulators all um, recognizing Bitcoin as an asset class. So they're accepting it. These are big changes that are occurring. And uh, 
thinking like this, hedge fund billionaires thinking that, you know, I should have bought more. That type of thinking is pervasive. It's, it's, it's slowly building and building. So um, another, uh, the eToro um, CEO, he believes 10 trillion. And if that gives, that, that's what puts Bitcoin around the um, $500,000 mark. And you can see all of this thinking and all of this activity slowly accumulating into uh, the diminishing supply of Bitcoin for trading. Uh, so that's what's going on behind the scenes. You see the fast dip, but the problem is that most people are holding Bitcoin, are holding it. And these bigger buy orders that are coming across in time, uh, it, it, once that occurs, you get that flip where you have more buyers and sellers and you get rid of the short-term retail thinkers, uh, you're going to have uh, Bitcoin rejoin its stock-to-flow model more than likely, which I think this goes up to uh, the 100,000 all the way up to the 333,000 mark, if I'm correct, by 2024. So things look really good for Bitcoin fundamentally is the point of this. And I'm seeing the activity in the price action demonstrate itself as um, buying and holding and larger orders. Um, and that's what I want to see. I want to see the, the bigger money buying uh, Bitcoin. Anyway, those are my thoughts for the week. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.